biscuits and gravy. Mmm, one of my favorite dishes for breakfast. Hot, fluffy biscuits, rich, creamy pork gravy on top. And we're gonna make it here in this video, so stick around. Hey everyone and welcome back. Larry here again to bring you a, a collaboration video of sorts, actually. I'm doing a food video collaboration with Brian over at Short Circuit of Brewers. A lot of you may already may know him, right? Being a home brewing channel and a home brewer yourself, watching my channel. And he actually, a little bit of background about this uh, collaboration was that uh, this wasn't what we were originally planning on doing. What we originally planned on doing many months ago, if you were uh, in the know on some of my live streams and, and uh, other things I talked about, uh, an upcoming trip to Ohio to spend the weekend with Brian at his place back in March. Uh, Chad and I were both supposed to travel out there and we had firm plans. We were starting to get ready to pack up and took off work and everything to head out there. And uh, this COVID-19 thing came along and locked uh, Ohio and Illinois down. Ohio being where Brian is and Illinois where I'm at. So it was a real bummer um, that we had to cancel that trip. Uh, we, we've been trying to replan it since, but this whole COVID thing has been carrying on for so long now. Um, we decided to uh, come up with a different approach. And this is that different approach. So what Brian's gonna do is, uh, he's gonna walk us through the biscuits and gravy recipe that he was going to make for me at his house in person. And he's gonna show us, you and me alike, how it's done. So take it away, Brian. Thanks, Larry. One of the things that's real common in the South where I grew up is a sausage gravy and biscuits breakfast. And I wanted to share that with Larry in person right here at Short Circuit of Brewers HQ. But unfortunately, events occurred out of our control. We could not get together. So I wanted to share the recipe with him in video form and with you at the same time and show you my recipe for a delicious, flaky, buttery biscuit with a creamy, rich, spicy gravy. So let's get into it. All right, so the first ingredient that we've got is self-rising flour. Uh, the next ingredient that we're gonna need for this is butter, and it, you want it to be really, really cold. You can actually put it in the freezer if you want to and let it chill out for about 15 minutes or so in there. We're gonna need the whole stick and so what we'll do is we'll actually drop that into flour and then an unconventional method that i have discovered is using a cheese grater to grate the butter into the the flour so we'll go ahead and grate the butter in there and we're going to use the whole stick this if you notice the title of the video didn't say low fat it didn't say diet I don't see low fat or diet anywhere on Larry's channel. So <laughs> we're, we're going for the gusto and I'm telling you, we don't add any other salt or anything like that. So this is actually salted butter, uh, just to let you know there. And I'm going to grate this entire stick of butter into the flour, which uh, was two and a half cups. I think I said that already, but just in case I did not. All right. And that is self rising flour, not all purpose. All right, and what I'll do is I'll usually take my hand real quickly, and you don't want to hang on to the butter too long because it'll start to melt, and we don't want that. So once we get the butter nice and incorporated in there, and it looks kind of like crumbs, then we've got, we're going to add a cup of milk. And that's it for the recipe as far as the ingredients go. And then what I like to do is I like to actually fold the milk into the flour. I don't really want to work the dough very much. I just want to try to get everything kind of hydrated and the way that I found best to do that is just kind of fold the dough and keep folding until you get pretty much all the liquid incorporated in there and you might have to scrape off the spatula and spray paint your kitchen with flour and butter and milk <laughs> we're cooking for real guys all right so do that and then once you get it all incorporated in there pretty well then what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn this out onto 
the countertop. And it's going to be really like a shaggy, ragged dough right now. And that is absolutely fine. That's what we want. So we'll get this turned out on there. And I'm going to scrape the bowl, get all of the flour you can out of there. And it looks just like nothing right now. It looks like a big mess, basically. But trust in the process. We're going to get there. And it will make some awesome biscuits. Oh, one thing I forgot. Get your oven preheating to 425 degrees. I've got a really great little countertop oven here that is convection. Works really well for doing small things like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually kind of bring this dough together and get as much of it off the spatula as we can. And we're going to kind of pat it together. And one of the other tools that I like to use is a bench scraper, and that's pretty essential for this. So if you don't have one, definitely look and look at getting in, getting one. Uh, I'll have Larry leave it a link in the description below for one that I would recommend. I like mine. It has inch marks on the side. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this dough over probably three or four times. And you can see it's starting to come together and get really sticky. Fold it over three or four times just to get it kind of incorporated. And then once we get it to where it's kind of one big mass, we'll try to make it into some semblance of shape here. I'm going to take a little bit of bench flour and sprinkle it on just all purpose flour with a little strainer. Get it coated with flour really good. And then what I'll do is I'll take my rolling pin and I'll give it a little dusting of flour as well. Get it nice and floured. Then I'm going to roll this out to probably about a half an inch thick. And then once I do that, I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it over about halfway. Take the other side, fold it over about halfway. Then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to kind of basically just make it into like a little package here. Now what we're doing when we do that, we're actually making layers in the dough. And that is going to turn out into some really super flaky stuff. So give this another roll. And at this point, once we've turned it that many times, it's actually looking pretty good. And what I generally do is I'll roll it out to just a little bit larger than a six by nine square. And that is where the bench scraper with the measure on it comes in handy. So we're just a little bit over six there and just a little bit over nine there. So we've got this all rolled out now. And if you notice, I did not have a biscuit cutter here on the counter at all. What we're actually going to do, we're going to use a knife. And the reason we use a knife is because we don't want to press all of those layers together. And so what we're going to do is going to cut the sides off, make sure that we leave no surface uncut, basically, on there. And all right, so we've got that. And then you can take these and make them into something if you want to. I don't usually do much with them, but uh, that is where we are with that. Now I'm going to cut this down the middle right here, and then I'll use my bench scraper to give me an idea of what we're looking like. So we're actually looking pretty good. So we've got about a six by nine sheet of dough here. And so I'm going to cut it in two inch by two inch squares, basically, and make sure everything is all separated. Now, once our oven is preheated up to temperature, we're going to throw these in there and we're going to cook them for about 12 minutes. Now I'm going to get this all cleaned up and come back and show you how to make the gravy. All right, so the biscuits are in the oven. They're going. I do like to use like a nonstick, either nonstick foil or some parchment paper for the biscuits. They don't need to be greased or anything like that. So let's talk about the gravy. Now, I make my own sausage, and maybe you can talk Larry into making a video on this because I'm going to share my recipe with him on this. Uh, I like spicy sausage just because I think it adds a lot of flavor to the gravy. And even if you don't like spicy stuff, it, it does add a certain depth of flavor. you got a lot of milk and a lot of flour in this. So generally, I don't find that it makes it too overly spicy. 
but you can choose whatever type of sausage you want, uh, either mild or, or spicy, and that will kind of be your choice. So what I'll do with this is I'll actually break it up and put it in the pan. And I've got my pan on high heat here. And so we'll go ahead and get this going. I just like to separate it all out and then we'll chop it up a little bit finer with our stirring spatula here. All right, so once we get this all in here, we'll get this start frying up. And what I generally will do is I like to let everything get nice and brown. It kind of looks a little bit gray. Uh, I'll get everything nice and brown. And then as I'm going along, I'll actually be kind of cutting up the sausage in there. And this is kind of a personal preference. If you want big chunks of sausage in your gravy, then you can go ahead and just keep cutting it up until it's a bunch of fine pieces. I kind of like a little mixture of both as far as that goes. So I usually just keep cutting it until I get the consistency that I want and then just let it keep frying. You can get a little bit of browning on it. Shouldn't be too hard to do, but uh, I'll just let this go. All right, so once you got your sausage nice and browned up, you are going to add one third of a cup of flour. And basically what we'll do with that is we'll just go ahead and stir it in with the sausage and get everything all nice and coated and kind of let it cook for just a little bit. We're almost making what would be considered a roux with this. So I'm just going to let it cook for just a little bit. And then once we do that, get it moved around in the pan a little bit. Then I'm going to add two cups of whole milk. So we'll add the two cups of whole milk and that should just about cover the sausage in the pan. And so what we're going to do is we're going to act, we're actually going to bring this up to a boil and we might need to adjust this uh, for thickness, depending on how the roux reacts with the milk. And we're just gonna let it come up to a boil. We'll see how thick it is. If it's too thick, then we can always add a little bit more milk, which I kind of like to err on the side of caution. So if you start with the two cups, that's a pretty good place to start. And it's not gonna be too thin, I don't think, just from my past experience. And then while we're waiting for that to come up to temperature, I like to add, some fresh ground black pepper to it and then this is the point that i'll add salt and i'd recommend probably about a teaspoon of salt something like that to start with for the recipe so i'll add about a teaspoon of salt in there and then you'll have to taste this as you go along and see how you like it if you want a little more pepper put a little more pepper a little more salt then uh, you definitely can add some more salt and i'll do that before i call it good but I'm gonna let this come up to temperature here. It looks like it's actually starting to thicken up already. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but, and I gotta say, I think this is coming out about the thickness that I like. And so I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little bit because it's really boiling. And we're gonna give this a taste and see where we are with our seasoning and give it a taste. Mm. Tasted really good, nice and creamy. The sausage has that little spiciness to it. It really tastes good. I think I could use a little bit more salt. And as it's starting to cook a little more here, I think I could use a little bit more milk. And like I said, you, you can't take milk out. You can always add it, but you can't take it out. So you're better to err on the side of caution and see how it's doing. So let me grab some milk here. And then we'll put probably just a couple of tablespoons in at a time. Not much. See how that does. Cause it doesn't take a whole lot to thin it out. So. All right. That looks pretty good. And now our biscuits, I will tell you that they just went off a little bit ago and they are looking absolutely divine. Let me pull these out for you and show you what those look like. Those are absolutely amazing. Nice and thick. They actually flaked up really nice. You can see that they're nice and flaky. Lots of steam coming out of them when you open them up. All right, let's get this thing plated up. Let me turn this burner off and I'll grab a plate. And 
what I like to do is just pop open a biscuit, kind of stack it up on top of one another like that, grab a nice spoonful of the gravy, and just ladle it right over the top of it. And I mean that right there is a thing of beauty. It's rich, it's creamy, has a wonderful texture to it. Let's have a taste. The gravy is rich and creamy. The biscuit is flaky and it's got a little bit of a crunch to it, but not too hard. Just a nice texture. It's soaking up that gravy really nice and it's just, it tastes amazing. So Larry, I'm sorry you couldn't be here to taste this. Maybe you can make some for yourself, but this right here, if you make this for your family, they're going to ask you the next time you're making it again. Trust me, this is definitely something that sticks to your ribs. It's a hearty breakfast. You probably don't even need anything else with this except for maybe a glass of orange juice. So back to you, Larry. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, that looked really good, man. I really wish I could have been there for the uh, festivities, of course. Uh, it's the next best thing is to watch you make it and watch me drool watching you make it. So uh, anyway, luckily, while you were doing that, I went ahead and made my own. <laughs> Followed your recipe. Right there, yeah. Uh, is it gonna follow in there? I don't know. Anyway, um, so I have a chance to try this too. Well, I changed. I didn't follow the recipe exactly uh, because my wife and kids are not into hot, spicy uh, foods, and uh, so I had to dial it back the cayenne. But um, let me give it a try. Mmm. Oh, that was good. Um, I also did some other things too. I mean, it's really good. I, um, as you can probably see, I didn't um, cut, I cut them in the squares. I used a uh, biscuit cutter, right, to uh, form my circles. And uh, I didn't have any self-rising flour, so I substituted by making my own self-rising flour out of all-purpose flour, baking soda, and salt. Uh, because you know I'm all about making things from scratch right so so I figured if I was making the, the biscuits from scratch the uh, sausage from scratch and everything why not make the flour that makes the biscuits from scratch too so that's what I did I can't I couldn't help myself so uh, wow man man that's awesome man so hey uh, I'm gonna finish this in just a minute but uh, thank you Brian for willing for be for being willing to do that for us and uh, Hope you all liked what he did there. Uh, in the future, we're gonna try to do a real collaboration on site uh, somewhere here, right? At some point when, the, when this craziness with this uh, China virus ends, right? So uh, anyway, uh, if you like what you saw there, give me that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about uh, what you saw in the video, the recipe, whatever, right? Uh, leave a comment down below. And Brian mentioned the sausage recipe. Um, I'll have it down in the uh, video description with the rest of the recipe and a link to his channel and if you are really nice to him and join his patreon page i hear he's got the sausage making video for patrons only there mm, all right and if you're going to go there and sign up for brian why not go up there and sign up for my patreon too right <laughs> uh cool all right well thanks for watching i'll talk to y'all later